Good morning. I say good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I love the laughter. I love the chatter. And those who are still uh, congregating and, and, and you hear the laughter as they come in. It is uh, truly an honor just to pastor here. We welcome those who are worshiping online uh, with us this morning. And uh, we welcome those on Optimum Cable uh, Network Channel 5. And those who are also worshiping on the Greenbrier County uh, Facebook channel, Facebook page. We welcome all of you guys here. And uh, just so excited that you'll be here. A couple uh, announcements before we get started this morning. One of those being um, that next Sunday, next Sunday the 6th, is going to be our uh, family uh, fall day. We're going to have a, a great time together. And there is going to be a nacho bar there. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Clint will correct me if I am, um, but there's going to be uh, chicken, beef, and shrimp for your nachos, so it'll be a great time with all the fixings, and uh, we're going to have a good time of fellowship together. There's going to be a, a small competitive cornhole tournament, and uh, uh, we know that, that Caden will somehow try to muster up somebody that will be his teammate as he takes on his mother, and uh, we... <laughs> We all know how that's going to end, ain't that right, Caden? Um, but anyway, um, that's one. We want you to bring somebody with you. If you're worshiping from afar, you want to be here for that day, please come and join us. We'd love to have you. And uh, also, um, it is an exciting time of the year. Fall is starting to be in the air, and, and apple butter is in the process of being made. So in, in October the 12th, it starts at a bright time of 4 30 a.m. Now I understand not everybody's going to be here at the break of day uh, for the putting on of the apple butter but I promise you that if you come a little later there will be breakfast and lunch and and a time of fellowship as we stand around the pot stir the kittle just a little while and maybe 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 inhale just a little bit of smoke <laughs> from the fires. All right, but it is a great day. If you want to come be a part of that, please do, and uh, we will uh, we'll enjoy time together. And uh, yeah, so uh, I think I'm I'm good to go now. Um, uh, women's ministry, uh, if you want to go to that, uh, the money is due today, but uh, you can also do it online. You can see Miss Kim, and and she'll help you with that. Christy will help you with that as well. Um, let us stand to our feet, go to the Lord in prayer, welcome the presence of the Lord into this place. Believe in God for great and mighty things uh, today in this house. Amen. Father, we just come in the mighty name of Jesus. What a joy it is to be in your presence. Lord, we just, we just welcome you here, Lord. Father God, what, a, what an awesome time it is to join together. We are so thankful for those who are able to come and be with us in person. And, and Lord, those that, that, that are unable to be, those that are going through sickness, those that are um, going through treatments, those who have just recently had surgeries, Lord, that are unable to be here this morning. Father, I just pray healing upon their bodies. Lord, I pray you give them strength. Lord, I pray for, for those who are worshiping in a fire, Father. I pray that you would just touch their lives where they're at. And Father God, that, that they would feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Fill them and, and encamp in their home, Lord. And, and abide with them in this moment, Father, as, as we uh, begin to cry out to you and, and welcome you into this tabernacle. Father God, I pray today that you would just join in the midst. And Father God, you know the needs that have walked into this room today. You know the heart conditions that's walked into this room today. Father God, you know the ones that are worshiping on the line. And Father, we just give it all to you in this moment. We ask, Father God, that you would begin to, to move as you see fit. Father God, we stand in awe of who you are and all the things that you are doing. And Father, I pray over the tithe, over the offering, Lord, those who have given in the given station, those who have given online, Father, we just so thankful that we have the ability to give back to you. And Father, as we honor, as we honor uh, your, your word, Lord, we understand that there's a promise that is going along with that. And Father, that you're going to multiply it in the kingdom, but you're also going to multiply it back into the life of the believer. And Father, we believe that the windows of heaven shall be open and that you'll pour out a blessing that is unable to contain. Father God, we praise you now. For Lord, we put our faith, our hope, our confidence in you. And Father, as we are entering into the worship set this morning, I pray, Father God, that in this moment, Lord, let us open our heart. Let us open up the depths of who we are, Lord. And Father God, that we see the necessity of your presence. 
Lord God, I pray whether uh, life has, has thrown us a curve this week, whether we are, are, are trying to battle back from, from, from all the rains and the things that has taken place. And Lord, in this moment, we also pray for our IPHC brothers and sisters that may be having to dig out today. Lord God, I pray for those that may be affected by the floods that have came and the hurricane. That Lord God, in this moment, Lord, we also ask that your presence would come and abide in this house, Lord. That our minds be cleared. That Lord, whatever is going on in life, that in your presence there would be the fix. Lord, we welcome you here. Lord, let nothing that is in our life hold us back from worshiping you. Father, I pray that you move upon us. In this moment. And Father we give you praise. We give you honor and glory for everything that you do. In Jesus name we pray. And everybody says. Amen. Let us worship the Lord together. He shames every idol. Without rival, he goes by the name of Jehovah. Jehovah, he speaks into the thing, and darkness goes running. He goes by the name of Jehovah. Call the name, call the name, call the name, Jehovah. All our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to Him. will be silent. He's fighting for Zion. There's no other God like Jehovah, Jehovah. His heart never tires. His eyes are like fire. Father God, like Jehovah, Jehovah. Call the name, call the name, call the name, Jehovah. All our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to Him. Call the name, call the name, call the name, Jehovah. All our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to Him. Nisi fights your battles. Jehovah Nisi fights your battles. Jehovah Nisi fights your battles. Jehovah Nisi fights your battles. Let's sing that church. Jehovah Nisi fights your battles. Jehovah Nisi fights your battles. Jehovah Nisi fight your battle. Jehovah Nisi fight your battle. Jehovah Nisi fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh meet your need. Jehovah Rapha heal your body. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh, meet your need. 
Jehovah Rapha heal your body. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Call the name. Call the name. Call the name. Jehovah. All our praise. All our praise. All our praise belongs to Him. Call the name. Call the name. All the name Jehovah, all our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to Him. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. We declare that you're worthy, Father. Worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, this morning we're going to introduce a new song to you. And it's called, God is not against me. And I'll be honest with you, I've been feeling some heaviness here lately. And as I was praying and seeking the Lord for direction for this week's worship, I was reminded that I am not alone and that he's with me. So this morning, as we sing this, I want you to worship as you feel led. But I want to tell you, church, that you're not alone and he's right there with you. He's fighting for you. He is for us, church. Amen. Amen. You call me strong and courageous When I don't feel like I am You could have turned me away But you chose me instead You say that I'm gonna make it When I don't feel like I can and you see the battle I'm facing you're stepping in you're in it with me you're working through me fighting for me God is not against me with me you're working through me you're fighting for me god is not against me and i have a new revelation a savior who calls me his friend you used to fight on my but never again And I have a power that's greater Than all of the enemies lies I know the truth of the gospel That you're on my side You're on my side you're in it with me, you're working through me, you're fighting for me, God is not against me. You're in it with me, you're working through me, you're fighting for me, God is not against me. You're in it with me, you're working through me. Fighting for me, God is not against me. You're in it with me. You're working through me. You're fighting for me, God is not against me. my fight you're my 
defense you hold my life this is my confidence you're by my side you call me friend you hold my life this is my confidence this is not my fight for my defense you hold my life this is my confidence you're by my side you hold me friend you hold my God is not against me. You're in it with me. You're working through me. You're fighting for me. God is not against me. You're in it with me. You're working through me. You're fighting for me. God is not against me. Working through me, you're fighting for me. God is not against me. You're in it with me. You're working through me. You're fighting for me. God is not against me. You're in it with me. You're working through me. You're fighting for me. God is not against me. You're in it with me. You're working through me. You're fighting for me. God is not against me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's just some problems only God can fix. And all of my trials pull me down to this. And I've seen it happen time and time again. Again. There's just some problems only God can fix. And there's just some battles flesh and blood can win. And there'll be some moments that just don't make sense. I can't see it now. But I'm still convinced There's just some problems Only God can fix Not by power Not by might But by the Spirit of the living Spirit of the living
fortress. My refuge, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. My helper, defender, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. Oh, oh, oh. someone let the people know anything is possible. No weapon will prosper, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. My fortress, my refuge, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. My help, defender, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. Oh, 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 oh. someone let the devil know, tell him that he's gotta go. You're still a strong tower, still a strong tower. My helper, defender, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. Oh, 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 oh. someone let the people know anything is possible. No weapon will prosper, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. My fortress, my refuge, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. My helper, deep in the still a strong tower, still a strong tower. Oh, 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 oh. someone let the devil know, tell him that he's gotta go. No rest, will prosper, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. I think the, my favorite part of that song is somebody let the devil know. Tell him that he's got to go. Now, has anybody ever seen somebody do the Holy Ghost stone? Y'all with me? Y'all not moving your feet yet. Come on. Somebody said I didn't come to church for aerobics. This ain't aerobics. We're going to sing that again. Somebody let the devil know. Tell him that he's got to go. I'm declaring he's under my feet. Anybody with me this morning? Come on. Hey. My fortune. Come on. My refuge. Still a strong tower. Still a strong tower. My refuge. Still a strong tower. Still a strong tower. Oh, oh, oh. Someone let the devil know. Tell him that he's got to go. Oh, oh. Come on. Still a strong tower. Still a strong tower. My fortress, my refuge, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. My helper, defender, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. Oh, 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 oh. someone let the devil know, tell him that he's gotta go. No weapon 
of the Lord this morning. Shoo! Sometimes it's just good to stomp on the devil, isn't it? <laughs> oh, mercy. Well, I'm excited to share the word of the Lord with you this morning. I will try to be as prompt as possible. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited uh, to share with you the second sermon in the the series help is on the way and we will talk about host and his presence this morning just for a little bit and uh didn't really expect for this to take off but this is the way the lord's been dealing with me so i want to share it with you uh, we're going to be in second chronicles second chronicles chapter 20 i know before anybody ever says anything pastor west that is a very familiar passage of scripture you preach it a lot and you're right um, but I keep reading it and new things jump out at me and I just want to share it with you uh, today um, Before we get started, let us go to the Lord in prayer father We come in the mighty name of Jesus Lord. We thank you for this day We thank you Lord for this hour this time Lord just to be your vessel And I ask the Lord for a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost to follow up on me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet I pray father God that you would move through me allow me to speak the things you have Lord nothing more nothing less And father I pray today that the presence of God fill this house Lord in every home that is tuned in and every home that will tune in Father God I just pray that in this moment you do great and mighty things Father God we have high expectation Lord in Jesus name we pray Amen and amen now, last week we, we was talking about help is on the way. And if I could bring just a little bit of humor into, into this, just to, to start off with, I remember when season was over, football season last year, um, Caden was in hopes that maybe something would happen for Seattle. And maybe, just maybe, they would get a little bit of a reinforcement in the area of quarterback and maybe even a new coach. I, you know, there was a lot of prayers going up from Caden for his football team. And then there come this sound that maybe, just maybe, help might be on the way. That there might be a new quarterback in town. There might be a new coach coming that direction. There might be some new tradies. And, and, and Caden was really optimistic and exciting. And we all know how this is going to end for that. But I'll go from something else real quick. Okay, But he knew that help was on the way for that thing. How many knows that, that there's one thing for help to be on the way. There's another thing for help to show up. Are you with me? I like knowing helps on the way, but I really appreciate it when help shows up. <laughs> Y'all with me today? Um, can you remember a, a time in your life where you didn't just need to know that help was on the way, but you needed the help to show up? <laughs> Caden, you're killing me, sir. Humanity, listen to me. Humanity is so overwhelmed by busy schedules, issues of life, that sometimes we don't even look for help anymore. Y'all with me? We just say, well, I guess this is the way life is supposed to be, or it's always going to be like this. 
there's something that I have noticed through the years that shifts current situations. And that's the presence of God. Throughout scripture, his presence altered situations that some would call unrealistic. I want you to know today that God is still on the move and we can still host his presence. I was reminded of um, the Lord of the passage of scripture I'm going to share with you this week and I have had the honors of preaching it as a pastor. I've had the honors of preaching this passage as an evangelist. And you may see a little bit of both come out in me this morning. Um, but the, the truth is, is I've seen something in this passage that I kind of wondered, but it just come to life to me. So in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it gives us a clear picture of reality. The children of Israel were minding their own business. And... Uh, they become threatened of the enemy. So how many of you ever felt like you was minding your own business and then all of a sudden out of nowhere an attack came? It happens. You know, the people of Moab and Ammon and others with them came to fight with Jehoshaphat. The number of those against them were overwhelming. Jehoshaphat feared Set himself to seek the Lord, called for a fast. He joined together in unity and prayed. But can I ask, what else would somebody who's scared do? You know, when we get scared, we have a tendency to cry out like we've never cried out before. And this might be us today, scared and overwhelmed. But let's pick up in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I'm going to read verses 12 through 17. We're going to preach as the Lord allows us to this morning. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Now all... Judah with their little ones and their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jezel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jezel, and the, the Menaniah, the Levite uh, of the son of Asphath in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's God. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz or the cliff of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem? Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord is with you. Now I know you're probably asking the question this morning. What is in this passage that you have never seen before? Well, I'll get there in just a moment. Hang with me. But the first thing that I want to bring out as we kind of lay a foundation for where we're going this morning of host and his presence. When in despair, we must turn our eyes to the Lord. I know this is very simple, right? But in, when, when all things notice that in the midst of their desperation, their eyes were on God. Their eyes was turned to him. This was a national crisis that had a personal effect. And I, I, if I could just break away just for a second, I know that what we say here in America is that what isn't bothering my family won't hurt me. But I want you to know that what is in the nation will eventually be in the family. And if we turn a deaf eye and a turn a deaf, deaf ear to it, and we don't see the things coming or hear the things coming, we won't know how to be resistant when they get here. Are you with me? And then they will become normal. Our vision must not be obscured due to the in intensity of the, the environment around us. 
So our, our vision must not be altered uh, from our focus on God because of the situations that are surrounding us. Anybody with me this morning? So my question arises, what caused their focus to be on God? I want to know why was they looking to Him? What caused the presence of God to come and the Spirit to fall on them? I think this is something that, that we've got to look at when we realize that the battle was not theirs, but God's. So, so there's, there's a bigger picture to what we as evangelists would preach, the battle's not yours. I'll get there in just a second. But I believe that, and some believe, now hang with me, let, let's, let's, let's bring up some think of, thinking here. Um, was it the praying? Was it the fasting? Was it the unity of, of, in the desperation of all ages and all the people? Was, is that what brought the presence in? I believe that in order to figure it out, we have to look a little deeper to see how the presence of God came into the midst of them. Jehoshaphat led them back into a covenant relationship with God. Hang with me, I'm going to take you somewhere this morning. Let's understand what a covenant is. And as American people, we don't like covenants. We don't like contracts. Y'all with me? It's the binding of two bodies. It's, it's saying that I will hold up this end of the deal if you do that end of the deal. It's a mutual agreement. We don't like that. And matter of fact, we're excited when our cell phone contract runs out. Help me today. And then they pull you lure. I'll use the word lure you back in. Because if you will just get a new free upgrade. And say you'll stay with this company for X amount of years. You can have a new phone. And it is a under the radar way of entering into a contract. Okay. That wasn't popular. Let's move forward. <laughs> we have to understand where we're at in the context of Scripture. Jehoshaphat led them back into a covenant relationship with God. A covenant is a contract that is between two people. In this case, it was God and His people, Israel. He had established, listen, Jehoshaphat, in, in chapter 19... Because chapter 19 has to come before 20. So I find in chapter 19 that what has taken place is that he has begun to, to reignite the passions of God and establish a covenant relationship with God. He had now begun to establish Levites and priests and judges. So what he was doing, he was creating worshipers. There was worshipers that were now there. There were priests that were standing in communication between the people and God. And then there were judges that were making sure and giving instruction that people were following the laws of God. Y'all with me today? So he brought them back to the Mosaic Covenant. The covenant that God made with Moses on Mount Sinai uh, according, to, uh, uh, according to his promises. Now hang with me just for a minute because this is, this is foundational. He brought them back uh, and, and we can find in Exodus chapter 20 the way that it all begins to unfold. There was a reminder, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in other words, there was grace and deliverance. Before commitment and relationship. So he says what I'm going to do is. I have brought you out. I, I have pulled you out. I heard your cry. In the midst of all of your taskmasters. And all the things that had happened in, in life. I heard your cry. Moses you have went down. You have pulled them out. I want them to remember all of the miracles. That I performed as a supernatural God. I want them to remember it. I'm the God that brought you out of Egypt. Before anything was presented. But he said these are the things that I want you to do. And he goes in Exodus chapter 20 and he begins to listen to me. He says you shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no idols. 
shall take no God, no, you shall not take God's name in vain. And let's understand the word vain just for a moment. It doesn't mean that you are, are cursing at God. It is saying that you're using His name in a context that's unprofitable. Y'all with me? Listen, we throw God's name around in, in the culture we live in like a bunch of ping pong balls at a ping pong tournament. Just saying. He says, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. I want you to know that the, that the first four of the commandments is all vertical. It is all a relationship with God. It's all up and down. It's my relationship with Him. And He's saying, I don't want you to have any other God before me. Why is that necessary? Because in Egypt, they served many gods. And in order for Him to be Yahweh, the Almighty God, He had to have people that would declare, it's not by the means of other gods, it's by the means of Yahweh. It's the by the means of the one true God. So he says, you can have no other gods before me. He says, you don't need no idols. You don't need no shrines. And we know we don't have those in America. Amen. And then he says what? He says, okay, don't take my name in vain. I want you to make sure that when you use the name of God, that you're using it in a top context that is profitable and that people understand you're recognizing my power. And then he said, hey, the way that you're going to manage the first three is because you need a Sabbath. You need time to pull away, rest in my presence and communicate with me. And then the other is horizontal. There's six horizontal commandments that goes among the people. What are they? I'm glad you ask. Honor your father and your mother. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't covet. And in other words, he says, hey, give honor where honor is due. He said, hey, make sure you keep your house your house and not go invade somebody else's. Amen. Don't steal. Don't take what don't belong to you. Don't lie. Don't say things that are untrue. And don't covet. Don't want what somebody else has got. Because of our relationship with God, we are very well founded, founded in Him. I don't have to worry about the last six as much because when my relationship with God is intact, I will follow the others. So we understand. Now get an imagery in your mind just for a second. The first four are vertical. And the last six is horizontal. And what does that make if my arm didn't stop right here? Across. Wonderful. You say, but that is so Old Testament, Pastor West. That doesn't apply to us today. Well, I'm glad you have, have brought that to my attention because Jesus confirms it in actually Matthew 22, 36 through 39. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. What is that? Oh my goodness. That means that what is vertical goes horizontal. Jesus said all of the law is wrapped up in two statements. The first four and the second six. The nation did not need to keep the law to be freed from bondage. They were freed from bondage, but the law would help them live for God in the midst of a crooked, crooked and perverse generation. Listen, the Ten Commandments doesn't free you. You are freed, and it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. The blood of Jesus is applied to your life, and you become new. But then the structure comes in place that helps us to live a life to where we will be a city that is set up on the hillside, and people will be drawn and see the light because we are what? Exemplifying Him. Ah, oh, come on. 
this transformation is what sparked the invasion. At the end of, of chapter 19 of 2 Chronicles begins chapter 20 in verse 1. It says, it happened after this that the people of Moab. Listen, when you get right and you do right, the enemy is going to come after you. Everything we do is going to be in the headwind of the enemy, but by the tailwind of the Spirit. That means what? The devil going to fight you like you've never been fought before. That's why we put him on notice this morning and we begin to declare, you don't have no power over me. You got to go in the name of Jesus. I'm going to serve the Lord Most High God with everything that is in me and the powers of the enemy cannot derail me. I'm going to hold fast to His unchanging hand. I'm going to move forward in Him. And devil, take notice. You got to go. Now listen. Jehoshaphat reminded God of his promises. So if you come in covenant with God, and you know you're in covenant with God, there's expectations of what God is going to do. So in return, Jehoshaphat began to encourage the Lord in what he'd already committed to. Hang on, 2 Chronicles 25, 25 through 10. I'll read it real quickly for us. It says, Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem. In the house of the Lord. The same one that he had said what? If you would come into this house. And cry out to me. I'm going to hear. Okay. The Lord God of our fathers. Are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nation? And is your hand. Is there power and might. So that no one is able to withstand you. Or you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear and save. And now here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who you would not let Israel invade when they came out of Egypt but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Listen, in the midst of his prayer, he reminds God of his covenant with Abraham to to build a nation and with Moses to lead a nation into the promised land and to be that light. Anybody with me this morning? We need the presence of God in the midst of our assemblies. But it doesn't just happen that way where it just falls out of the sky and it comes in and just inhabits us. Hear me. By bringing them into obedience with the Mosaic Covenant, it would be by the means which the Israelites would manifest their faith, faith in the Abrahamic Covenant. Let's talk about progression just for a moment. And, and maybe in, an, in another sermon somewhere along the line, I'll break them down for you. But, but the progression is this, is that, that the world was destroyed with water. And then there was a covenant made with Noah. Then there was a covenant made with Abraham. The covenant with Noah was to say what? That, that what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky. You're going to be a fruitful and multiply. I'm not going to destroy the, the earth with water anymore. And then there was Abraham. He made a covenant with Abraham. And I'll read that one in just a second. That says, I'm going to make you a great nation. He made a covenant with Moses. That says what? I'm going to go get my people and they're going to be a chosen nation. Are you with me? And then he makes a covenant with David. That says, hey, out of your seed, there's going to be one who's going to reign forever. And it comes in the fulfillment of the new covenant, which is Jesus Christ. And the blood is applied. And we're going to end up back where we started in the garden in the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Well, that was a mouthful. In Genesis 12, 1 and 3, he says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, 
from your family and from your father's house into a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse them who curse you. And in all and in you all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. Hey, are you part of a family of the earth? Hey, let's look back to Abraham and declare because of your righteousness and God seen you and made a promise in you we have the right in the kingdom of God anybody with me so Jehoshaphat Jehoshaphat's ability to bring covenant renewal to seek the Lord remind him of his promise made way for the presence of God. Did you see that? They didn't just join together in unity and expect God to fall. It was Jehoshaphat's ability to realign himself with the covenant of God, lead the people in the covenant of God, and then receive the presence of God. It was in his presence. That the answer came. Hear me. Everything that led up to that moment. Set the stage for the presence. But the presence. Is what changed the situation. And this is where the American church is because I know we're different. This is where we're at. If, if, if we can just have a moment where I feel a little bit of a tingle go down my spine. I can go home and say I've been in the presence of God. If I can just for one moment clap my hands and stomp my feet one time. Oh, I've been in the presence of God. For those who are Pentecostal, if we speak in tongue one time, we say, oh, it's been years since I've spoken the heavenly language. We have must have been in the presence of God. Honey, can I share with you just for a moment that you should be as a Pentecostal praying in the Holy Spirit in your house and in the house of God. Help me, Jesus. We believe that if I can just get a sample, if I can just get a taste, then it has to be the presence of God. Listen, it was the preparation of the heart that made way for the presence to come. It said, then the Spirit of the Lord came on. Giselle. I love it. Because Isaiah said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jeremiah stated, oh, that the hand had anointed him and ordained him. And then Hebrews, the three Hebrew children, or the three Hebrew children, they turned a furnace into a tabernacle. You say, how in the world did that take place? Because they came in and, and they said, I'm not going to bow. I'm not bowing down. They said, okay, fine. We're going to throw you in the fire. And they said, okay, do it. So they bound them up, heated up the furnace hotter than it ever been, and throw them in. And then Nebuchadnezzar looks down and he says, oh my goodness, didn't we throw three men into the fire? They say, yes sir, that's what we did. And the ones who threw them in, they did. They couldn't even stand to the fire. So we know we got them taken care of. He says, oh no, there's a problem here guys. What's that? Well, I see a fourth man in that fire. And the fourth one looks as if the Son of God say, hey, in the middle of a furnace, they turned it in through a tabernacle. Why? Because they welcomed the presence of God. Whew. The people watched as the Spirit fell on Jesus. Amen. 
John the Baptist says, I don't need to baptize you. He says, oh, yes, you do. He says, no, nope, you need to baptize me. I'm not even worthy to unlatch your shoes. He says, no, nope, because I know you need to baptize me. They go in, they baptize him. When he comes up out of the water, the heavens open up. And all of a sudden, there's a voice from heaven that says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit as a dove floated down and lit up on him. Jesus reinstated in, as he read from Isaiah in Luke chapter 4. He says, what? And he said, when he opened up the book and he found it where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And can I share for you uh, just for a moment that on the day of Pentecost, uh, when they were gathered oh, in one mind and one accord and begin to believe that God was able, he came. And guess what? The presence of God came in as a mighty rushing wind. Oh, and tongues of fire uh, fell on each of them. It was the presence of God that inhabited the people. For what purpose may you say? Oh, honey, I want you to know that today uh, the presence of God uh, could fall upon you. But if it did, uh, what is for the purpose of it? Uh, how in the world are we going to react? Uh, what are we going to do uh, when we respond? Uh, is it for the shout? Is it for the dance? Uh, I love those things. Uh, but please understand uh, that in the middle of the presence of God, uh, there was the comfort of God. In the midst of the presence of God. A time of comfort. Peace. Oh my goodness. What are we longing for today? Peace. Chaos everywhere. Lord it seems like everything's. All up in the air all the time. In the midst of his presence there was comfort. He said do not be afraid. You don't even need to fight in this battle. There was direction that came in the presence of God that says, Go, position, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord that is with you. And then there's a promise of God that comes. The Lord is with you, and you need not fear. I know this is where we're at this morning and we say praise God I don't have to fight in the battle all I've got to do is stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord let me tell you honey the battle was already fought it was fought beforehand Jehoshaphat was the leader of the battle he brought him back in line with the covenant of God and then what they prayed and they fasted and they joined together the battle was spiritual it wasn't physical are you with with me and what we battle in the spiritual God will take care of in the physical we've just got to trust him and declare that he is able come help me close guys the covenant of God the God of the covenant showed up for the people of the covenant what does that mean There is still a value of living right and doing right. Hang on. You say, Pastor Wes, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And I say, you're right. But you have... The ability to turn away and walk away from him. Amen. You can deny that love. You say, why are you even going this direction this morning? Because I want you to know in the presence of God, things can change. In the presence of God, life can be renewed. And I don't know what your battle is today. Maybe you've come here, maybe you're at home, and, and maybe you just couldn't even make it today because you're battling with sickness. Maybe you're battling with being lonely or anxious, depressed. Uh, maybe finances is all jacked up, and, and, and you're having issues on your job, and, and, and there's things going on, and, and people are, are starting to persecute you, and there's family issues.
feel like you're surrounded on every side and don't even know what to do, can I share with you that in the presence of God, answers come. There's direction. They still had to go. Even in all the preparation that they had, he said, don't be afraid. You're not going to have to fight, but I still require you to go. That means you can't hide. As I look into the camera, I feel in my spirit to say this today. If you are so trapped in your bedroom and you feel like you can't move and you can't get out, get up in the name of Jesus and walk out of that room declaring the power of God over your life. What you're fighting might feel like a host of armies. Overwhelmed by their size. But can I share with you the God of covenant is much bigger. And you say, Pastor Wes, are we in that covenant? I am a seed of Abraham. I have been bought by the blood of the seed of Jesse. I'm in high expectation that as Jesus moved upon the face of this earth and the miracles were done through him, I have high expectation that those miracles are still available to us today. As we seek God, he can pour out the power of his might upon us and see miracles take place even in this place. But we need his presence. We need His presence. Every head bowed just for a moment. I want to thank you for taking the opportunity to join in and worship with us today. I know that life is crazy. A lot of times we are facing many adversities on every angle. Sometimes it feels like it's hard for us to even push forward to another day. But I want you to know that our God is with you. He's not left you and you're not forsaken. And I would like to pray for you. I'd like to pray for that God give you strength, that he would heal your bodies, that he would give you a new reason to live, that the load of life be lifted from you. Father, we just come in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for those who have taken the opportunity to worship with us today. Lord, you see the, the very things that they're facing. You see the, the situations, the circumstances. You see the need of jobs. You see, Father God, those who have family issues or those that may be going through illness. Lord, what I do know is that you are Lord of all. Father, I pray that you would go in this moment, and Lord Jesus, that you would touch hearts and lives, that you would even let them know by, by letting them feel the presence in the room with them, even as we're praying. Father God, I pray that there would be new hope, that there would be new expectation, that Father God, that their eyes be turned completely to you. I pray, Father God, in this moment that anxiety would cease and depression would release and that there would be a peace of life and a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Father God, we praise you for what you're doing in homes and in families and in lives in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining with us today and worshiping with us. May God bless you as we bridge hope to our community. We love you.